I'm not going to actually have to cut and edit the video. That's not what I signed up for. Welcome back to Raw Gaming Waffle, where this week we're going to talk about painting. And as you'll see, actually, I've shaved and changed my shirt so that we didn't just wear the same stuff which we've been doing every other week. So hopefully you can tell us apart this time. Uh, so, yeah, painting. I know you love painting. How long have you been painting for? Oh, uh, as a kid, I was painting. But my dad was into scale modelling, so I wasn't allowed to just paint things. They had to be painted like right. correctly. So there was... Know, maybe a certain style of painting or kind of a, an expectation of painting to a certain quality as a child which sounds really horrible but you know, it wasn't like a ooh have some freedom to be artistic yeah <laughs> I mean I remember doing the same thing and kind of you go to school on a Monday with an RF Randall transfer stuck in your finger because you just couldn't do it <laughs> but yeah I've been painting for a while and obviously with the amount of information that's out there now I think it's quite easy to get at least mentally experienced yeah. quite quickly if that makes sense you, there's a lot of information you can take in and I guess like a football fan I know you're better at talking about the sport than you might be <laughs> playing about uh, playing it yeah that sounds very familiar that's I mean so it's something you put a lot of time into as well though don't you yeah because yeah. you can say I've been painting for 10 years but if you've been painting for one day a week for 10 years that's not the same as what you've been doing which is painting hours a day like you know one minute every 10 yeah. your whole life yeah, well, yeah like, obviously your role is a your actual day. Your job is painting. So the hours you put in painting, obviously yeah. painting for someone else is different, isn't it? Because you're painting in a certain in a prescribed style rather than yeah. That was actually something I had to learn. I had to unlearn my way of painting and learn commission painting because you have to do what someone else wants. Yeah, and, and you have to do it quickly. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I imagine it's a very different style of painting and a very different way of it is. Yeah, getting something done. Well, because what I was actually interested in talking to you about is your process about painting. So, when you're going to do a mini, or a squad, or whatever, what do you do? What do, how do you go about it? Like um, from start through to completion? So, if we assume it's something that I know what... Say it's by my British infantry, it doesn't really matter what scale. And World War II British infantry, so I, it's something I know the subject matter. I think I'm not having to go and watch some videos or look up, buy a book. It's an excuse to, well, there's always an excuse to buy a book. So I might buy a book. You can always get a new book. Robin has an extensive and vast library. <laughs> of books that I definitely probably didn't need. But. <laughs> yeah, but you let me read them sometimes. Yeah, so I'll that works let for me. Out and stuff. It, means, it also means it looks like there's less so I can get more. Um, but yeah, it'd be, generally I'd always start the same way with paint it black. I, I like the black undercoat, but different scales, the different approaches, aren't they? So, you know, yeah, more than memory, 10 mil minis. Well, I need bold highlights so that from this far away I can see the faces, or whatever. Larger minis, I might try and do some glazing, I might try and make it smoother because it's different different things. Or, a lot of the time for me, it might be a case of I've started a project with an idea in mind that I want to try something new. It doesn't necessarily have to be an improvement. I'd never used. Uh, you know, Contrast Express. I can't remember what the war paint or uh, army paint one's called, Fast Paints, whatever they're called. I'd never used them before, so I had a project in mind of some stuff for sharp practice, and I was like, oh, well, I'm going to use them as a base. Not, that's a whole different, slightly different style to what I'd normally do, but that was a project started just so I could, partly as an excuse to play around with a new, a new way of painting. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, there's always an interruption isn't there usually it's my children but today it's my cat <laughs> so yeah you paint miniatures to try out new yeah. techniques and that is definitely something I do I'm always trying in my personal painting to try and move it ahead and get better and yeah. there'll often be something I want to do that I'll choose a mini to do so that there's a lot to do. So basically, this little collection here, these are all my minis, and I can tell you that this and this, I chose to do a speed painting job on. I tried to make it as fast as possible. This one was 
at the time, me really pushing myself. I feel like I could do it better now. And this one is actually, my little samurai is the most recent one I finished. And that was again me, I did a lot of glazing, building it up. And yeah, I was going to ask you actually, how often do you feel entirely happy with a minute you've done? Because him, I was really happy with um, for about 10 minutes. I would say, actually, I don't think I'm ever disappointed, which isn't quite the same. Mm. I don't think I'm ever disappointed with a mini. Yeah. Because I won't let myself finish it if I'm not happy with it. And to be honest, again, we are paying, whilst I love painting that, I am painting to game, which is a bit odd actually, because if there was no gaming, I'd still paint minis, but I can't do things like just scale models because I need to have a purpose for the mini at the end. Yeah. But even if there was no gaming, I'd still paint minis for gaming. Um, <clears throat> but I think most of the time I'm normally fairly happy or it's a case of okay well I'm painting my third British squad of 10 infantry I like the high you know maybe the colour I picked as a highlight because I like varying colours a lot maybe the colour I added to the uniform to do the highlights or my was more interesting or maybe my highlights were slightly smoother so I'm like okay well that works for next time so next time I'll do that but I'll, I'll try doing something to make the skin more interesting or better probably mm. better is probably the way you want skin so I think I'm ever unhappy with a miniature but I think it's always a case of it's always a learning process it's always I mean not always most of the time it's trying something new or different or just trying to do something a little bit better than before yeah I think that's fair because like I said I was really happy with him for 5-10 minutes and I'm still happy with him I'm happy with all these actually but there isn't one there that I don't look at and think I would do that differently I would do that better I think I could do that better. Yeah, but some of that probably comes from the, um, what's the word, exposure you have now to Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, where you can see yeah. amazing painters all the time. And it's almost worse. It used to be maybe easier when they were just in magazines. And you're like, that's amazing. I don't know how they did that. Now that there's three hour videos saying how they did that, I can understand the process I can tell someone else how they did that but I still can't quite do that and that's probably more inf infuriating than not knowing how they did it in the first place it's yeah. almost like having knowledge but not being able to yeah it's. I guess it's like Arthur C. Clarke said that was it like technology sufficiently advanced becomes magic it's almost like skills sufficiently advanced are magic yeah, well, yeah, if I just sit there and think you're a magician. I'll never understand how you do it. black art, so I don't need to worry about it. <laughs> I don't need to care. <laughs> Whereas actually knowing how they did it yeah. makes it worse because you can't always quite understand how you yeah. you can't do it either. And you try and do the technique that they make look really simple and then it just looks nothing as, yeah. like as good it's as It's like something like when you see people with super smooth transitions. and stuff. Okay, you've obviously done it with glazes. That's fine. And mm. I can do glazes. But my glazes seem to just be going over the top of each other and not because it's only on a miniature, you know, it's on a piece this big and they've managed to put 12 layers in. And okay, I put three in and now I'm going, my fourth layer is now going back over the same part and I'm not progressing the piece anymore. I, I might as well just have done the last three layers and not bother with the previous nine. You feel like you wasted time a bit, but I guess that all contributes to mm. improving. I guess it's, it's the old adage, isn't it? Practice makes perfect. Because if I think about when I first got back into the hobby, the first thing I painted up was a, was a Games Workshop Dark Eldar. Or possibly some Space Horse. Whichever one it was, I was mega happy with them at the time. And I found a photo of one. Because I got rid of them. And I found a photo of them. And they were awful. Yeah. It was so bad. And in the time period since then, which is only about five years, I've really improved. Yeah, I mean, you see, even if I don't feel like I'm that great at the minute and I'm not where I want to be, I still feel like, actually, if I if I take a step back and just look at what I've done, it's miles improved. Yeah, I mean, you see the people on you see people in the Facebook groups, don't you? Heavy like metal and things like that. Oh, I've only been painting three years, and here's my first picture. Well, uh, what have you done? And clearly, they've just intensely practiced oh, on doing yeah. But also, I think. You get smarter with your painting. Like, well, I don't know if it's going to be invisible on camera. But like you said, this was a speed paint job on the Viper, Jet Viper, whatever it is. 
I think it's actually a Star Weaver. Okay. <sighs> well, I can tell the, I can tell the Sherman's part. Um, <laughs> but, and you know, looking at close from behind that, I can see, yeah, that probably is a speed paint job. But you've done a few bits like the lozenges with the gradient, the little stars on the side of, that mean actually on the table, it looks like a higher end paint job. So you've been smart, you get smarter yeah. about how you paint to trick people, or not other people, trick just on the table, looking to maybe a slightly higher end paint job than yeah. it is. And surely that's a well, good thing as well. That's about being efficient. You yeah, no, more, I mean, you get it more is, efficient. Yeah, I did with um, the infantry for this is the same as that. And actually, I imagined it being like a Vitruvian man for two circles. So you got the, the inner circle and the outer circle. And weirdly, everyone talks about bases and bases. I think if you just expand that a wee bit to have like the arms, whatever they're carrying in their hands, yeah. so flesh, then you have this outer circle of good quality stuff, which hides the fact that on the inside it's just black with a bit of airbrush highlights. Yeah, or, or you get, you know, painting Napoleonics and you might go, okay, well, if I just make the cross belts nicely highlighted yeah. and the face now, I've got the key things there. So I think you get, even if you don't necessarily progress your skills that much, you progress your your efficiency but I think you have to be progressing something because if you and obviously if someone's happy with doing a certain style of paint job that's absolutely their prerogative and more mm. more painted stuff is better than not painted stuff but I remember when I you know did that in it well, what was it come back into the hobby no it was well, yeah no come back to the hobby one of the first 28 mil things I painted was some miniatures for Saga I've still got them they appeared in battle reports and stuff. I look at them and kind of cringe a bit, but they get on the table. But they were base coated and washed with possibly Devlin mud because I don't think they've changed to Agrax Earthshade at that point. And if I'd have just carried on painting Saga miniatures just with the base coat and Devlin mud, I could have done a hundred of them, and the last one would still only look like it was base coated and then washed. I, I would have got quicker. And my base coat might have got neater because I, you know, just brush skills or whatever. But they were never going to improve doing the same thing. It was only when I went, oh, I'll add a highlight. I'll just put the base colours back over the wash after. Well, now this miniature looks better because it's got, I hate the word pop, but it's got some punch to it. Let's use punch instead. Yeah, punch it's got good. some punch to it because I've redone those colours. Okay, well, I've done something different. So I've Im improved or evolved maybe is better than improved my painting technique and then it's like okay well next time I'm gonna do two layers of highlights on the skin and now the skin looks better or at least yeah. maybe not even more realistic maybe it just looks better on the tabletop so I think you have to be changing something not every single paint job because I get you might want some uniformity across an army but I think yeah. even then you still tweak things like you might go oh on that when I base my stuff I'm going to give it an extra layer of dry brush just to make it. Well, this is actually my, my great folly has been in the past that I have started a project that's a big project and I painted it up as well as I could, loved it. But then a few months the, down the line, the painting thing evolved. I've gotten better at painting and then I look at the project. Well, I can't now do that as well as I want to because yeah. it won't fit. Yeah, you probably don't think about adding, I don't know, slightly purpley glaze around the nose or something yeah. when you do a when you do a miniature now it's not something you think about it's just part of your standard process of oh I need some kind of life in the skin but it will still look better or different than the first unit of wherever it was you painted that didn't have that yeah and it's not it's not really a subconscious change because I guess you did it consciously but it's a change and now it's like okay well I'm going to do that on every miniature now might be a different shade might be a different something but I'm going to do something because I know I need to bring the skin I mean if I was a better person I would go back on these projects I and I would need to. well what I mean is that I that project in particular I just binned it off I got sacked off of it and I, I stopped if I were a better person I would have gone back and touched up the bits to bring everything in line with my new sort of improved self but I couldn't be bothered yeah, and there's always something new to do, though, isn't there? That's the thing. There is. You don't want to go back and do some, redo something you did. You want to do something new, because yeah. now I've got a new idea of, or my big thing is, I've got a new product. A little bit of a, a little bit of a, 
a sucker for a, a new product and especially now the modelling companies and that are getting more involved with oh war games things and stuff but I feel you know yes you can do it all yourself with oils and that and I do but filters pigments things like that they're getting more and more accessible there's more and more things to play around with and you know, some of the products I use I'm like I can't tell that product's different from that product but I like owning both it's the fact that you now get something which gets you a result which is incredibly close to what when I was a kid and I used to look in books of scale modelers and what have you yeah was this unachievable dream yeah that would have taken them hours and I can now do it by going opening a pot or something. yeah it's like you get to peek behind the curtain isn't it how yeah it, you know I guess it's like the concept isn't it was it some of the best painters only owned I can't remember what the colours are you know white blue you own your basic things and you mix from that because actually that's how you get mm. the best yes but actually owning green grey and grey green is handy because I've got two different paints to do two different things <laughs> yeah even if it can be confusing on the labels <laughs> you are, yeah <laughs> so I was going to ask if you then were approached by somebody who was just getting back into the hobby or just starting the hobby and they said I think I'm going to really like painting what I want to do is get from this basic level of painting I have now to something more more advanced shall we say yeah what are the what three things would you recommend for them to do um, obviously paint seems obvious but you have to actually do yeah. it and not you can watch all the videos in the world and read all the books you need to actually wield a brush at something or otherwise you're just going to be going well, I know all the ideas. Um, absorb as much information as you can because even if you're like, I can never do that, or that doesn't quite make sense to me because when I use paint, it doesn't flow like that well because maybe you're not thinning it or you're over thinning it or whatever, you're not getting the same results. It will still be a, there'll be a point, I don't know, in two months' time where something clicks and you're like, oh, that's why they did it that way because it, so I think just absorb as much information as possible. And then just, which sounds easy to say, just don't don't stress about it, just do something, you know. What's the worst you're gonna do? Is you make you make a colour choice. I do this quite a bit, you make some colour choice and you go, oh, okay, that that doesn't quite okay. Okay, well I'll just I don't know, let's add the base colour back into it or something and bring it back a bit closer together. That's a good three. So I was thinking something along the same lines of obviously you, you do have to paint. Um because I do recall at points, weirdly, being petrified to paint because I was watching all the stuff on YouTube and where have you and thinking, oh, I don't want to do that project I really want to do until I've mastered this technique. But I also can't currently go out and buy, I don't know what miniature I would get that I would want to paint to learn that technique on. And I'd just be weirdly paralysed and just do neither, which was not a good way to do it. When I actually just worked up the gumption to just paint something and say... Bleh. If it's not as good as that person has done on YouTube, who cares? That's fine. Yeah. And uh, then when I did that, then I was off and running. But I think some big things for me, and this actually feeds into your thing about watching lots of stuff and absorbing, is this book that's been sat mysteriously on the table for the last 15 or so minutes, which is actually my recipe book for every paint scheme I've ever come up with. Or... Alternatively, paint schemes I've seen people on YouTube do that's really good, that I like a lot. I'll write it down in here. And then you can come back to it at any point and you can come back to a project that you'd left a few months ago, find out exactly what you were doing and follow it again and kind of get the similar sub level of results. But what I did find it really good for was finding guys who can paint a lot better than I can who do their little videos about techniques. And I would try and transcribe into writing what I was seeing. Yeah. And then I can go away, try and absorb it, come back, have another read, and it might make a bit more sense to me. And um, so I would recommend that you find a handful of painters you really, really like the work of. And if they do videos, great. And if they don't, actually what's really useful, I find, is things like Instagram, have a look at what they've done and spend a good five minutes looking at it and try and work out 
what have they done? What ways or what methods could I use to try and get that result? And even if you're wrong, you're thinking, and you can go away and experiment, and you'll learn something even if you don't get that result. Because I think you and I both agree that actually if you spend a lot of time worrying about particular recipes, yeah, you're not going to really improve. No, I mean, I have a book, and my book's used slightly differently. So mine, when I'm doing projects like you know, Bavarians, 1940s, French, whatever, I write down the colours I used for those things, just so I've got some <coughs> things, so French pack might be khaki. But my recipe only goes as far as plus highlight. So, or plus highlights. So it's, oh, okay, I know what the base colours are used for, but I might, one, one squad I might decide, okay, I'm going to pick up uh, ice yellow and mix that into the, the green to make the highlight. Another miniature I might, of the same squad or the same army, I might pick up and go, right, okay, well, I'm going to use a warm grey to mix into that to highlight. So I've got variations. So I know where it should be, so the pack is brown, the uniform is blue, the headdress is red or whatever. So I've got the, once it works out what should be what colour, I've got the colours in the right place, but I leave it, I just write plus highlight as a free, kind of more of a free form mm. way of doing it. So maybe it's slightly less consistent, but I like the variation in my... Yeah, no, I can see, I mean... I, I do write down the basing exactly, though, because that's frustrating if you can't remember exactly how you did the basing. Cause oh, see, I, I circumvent that by doing the same basing on everything. Um, no, no, see, because I see something new, I want to try something different. I don't know, I get a few recipes I like and then I just sort of stick with it. Obviously I'll have different uh, a milieu. Yeah, different, um, yeah. So, snow, and that was meant to be... Grey? Yeah. Some kind of ashy... Some kind of ashy... Yeah, a bit less, bit less or whatever. Or a bit less temperate. Yeah, I don't know what that was. That might be a an error. Well, there is no errors. There happy, are no happy errors. Accidents. Happy accidents, yeah. <laughs> That's why I have two children. <laughs> That's not true. If they ever watch this video, they won't. <laughs> Nobody will. <laughs> um, um, yeah. Oh, say, oh, you were talking about your book and how you were doing the. Oh yeah, that was that. But I think it's when you were saying about accepting. I was saying I think you need to be accepting that something won't look as good as what's online or whatever, but you can't be defeatist about it. Yeah. You just have to accept. You no, know, you're only painting to a certain. I'm only painting to a certain standard. That standard is gradually improving, mm -hmm. but I'm not going to compare my stuff to a Golden Demon or a yeah um, San Savino class like, Okay, but they're they're up here and I'm down here, but I'm improving within my little yeah. Thing. And obviously, different different things require different techniques. You know, I would say I'm much better. At, not that you, you know, if you're going to grade yourself. I'm much better at painting armour than I am figures. If I paint more figures, my style or maybe because it's more process based or something like that, of painting vehicles and so on, just kind of clicks for me. I can do that easy. I can and simplify things and I get a good effect. And people are like, oh, how do you do that? It's, it's really simple. So if I tell you, I can't ruin the magic. But Yeah, no, don't tell people. But you can, I will ask actually, send me some photos and I can put them in the video yeah. for you people to look at. Because especially the, he said the vehicles are very, very nice. Yeah, but which are because I spend a lot more time painting things. I think some some stars that just I guess like some miniatures just click with certain people, don't they? You might be someone that's really enjoys or really good at painting cloth, like on your ranger, and enjoys getting the folds and the way the light is and this that, and the other. But you might then really struggle to translate something you're good at to painting power armor. I think it's a bit which you could paint more like a vehicle. You could paint more like a Thing. Yeah. So there'll be certain figures that I think probably just appeal to certain people, or they click with certain people a lot better. Which I think then probably frustrates some people, because I think someone will paint a space marine and go, "Oh, I'm actually really happy with that job." And then they'll go and paint a a, a ranger wearing cloth again, going back the other way, and go, "Oh, that doesn't come out as good." But I got good on that. What's it, it's a very different thing it's not the same style the way the light goes on it the texture it's all different I think people shouldn't worry about that kind of thing like, no. okay that's a different different challenge is different yeah and it is it's a very well it is obviously a creative hobby but I think creative things 
your personality comes out in it. So you'll always end up with things that you are better at than... Well, not even better at. It's, more, it's just, as you see, your style. Yeah. And your style will look different on different things. And there'll be certain stuff that your style just really suits. And one thing I wish I had more of is a unique style. And I haven't really found what that would be yet, but... Probably hard to get... Develop I, it. I guess doing commission painting because like you said you don't get to paint in what you might think is yeah. your style a lot of the time you might be trying to paint one week you might be trying to paint something that's retro Warhammer another week yeah. someone might want um, winter Germans that are dark and gritty well I mean I did actually literally just finish one that is retro Warhammer by sort of 20 odd years with goblin green bases and bright very, very retro pinks everywhere <laughs> yeah and then the other one I did recently was a what are they called? The Sri Lankan company. Oh, Fernando. Fernando Miniatures, yeah. Somebody at the club said, could you match these? So I had to go in and match this. So you get a toddler so. in a sweatshop. <laughs> no. It would have been cheaper, but... Actually, talking about... Oh, they're never going to watch it, are they? Fernando <laughs> thing. No, it's interesting because they have... I've read a few things about people that said they've actually been very happy with the product. So it's not about bagging on some a company that does something. They've been going for a long time as well. They have it's very interesting. They have absolutely zero knowledge because generally historical stuff they do of any period. Mm. So when someone sends them uh, Napoleonics and they want the thirty well, third foot or whatever, and they have to you have to say. Obviously, red tunics, yellow cuffs, yellow lapels, yellow turnbacks, white lace. They just work from those instructions. They do not have any knowledge of the thing, which probably means, again, they are just following recipes. We do red this way, we do yes. yellow this way, we do yes. blue this way. I think based it's quite on interesting. What I looked at, so because I was given quite a few different minis to match to, and if you looked at them, it very much did look like, because they mix up the colours, so there'd be like a, a tunic one colour and some oh. uh, I don't, sleeves of some description, some other colour. Um, so you saw the different recipes they'd use. It was the same for all of them. And there was also a strangely mechanical look to it, but where clearly they're just getting a mini, going, right, we'll do that line, next one, that line, that line. Yeah, Be all which the way down a does make some sense, because... Line. They have customers that have been using them maybe for 10 or 15 years and they need the last unit of mm. Napoleonic British to look the same as the first unit they sent them. But that's the thing of doing the same thing again and again and your style never changes or improves and never gets better because yeah. they are just doing... It's literal mass production. Yeah, it's robotic. Which is... It's not, it's not a hobby for them. No, no, absolutely. It's, no, a, it's, it's, a, it's no different to working in a car manufacturing plant. You know, you know what? Yeah. I would like the first car off the production line to have all the doors and all the wheels as the same place as the last car off the production line and not someone to go, you know yeah. what, I was creative and thought we'd mix it up halfway <laughs> and we've decided to have the steering wheel on the roof. What I've done with this Ford Mondeo is I've done this amazing fade pattern down the side. Yeah, it's, it's not what you want. There are certain things where it has to happen, but I think as a hobby, yeah. that's not how you want it to be. You want it to be a creative yeah process certainly if you're interested in the painting if you have zero interest in the painting I guess that's the advantage now with things like it doesn't have to be contrast because contrast is not a low end thing contrast is just a tool yes but there is products now if you have zero interest in the painting where you can spend minimal time and still actually have something that looks reason reasonable I'll say whereas before if you had zero interest in painting you probably had a single single colour rattle can or grey the things are there the tools are there now to have to make those things easier and more accessible and then people that are more interested obviously can use those tools as a base or use them as mm. just tools That's, you know contrast black has a, a great use for glazing or putting shade, shadow into areas and things like that it doesn't have to be used over the whole miniature just because GW say it does yeah that is true. But that's something you only find from experimenting or watching other people's, exper watching other people's yeah. experiments. That's the handy thing, actually. That saves you some time. It does. That's what I think it's a funny 
I'm almost a hypocrite in some ways because I think one thing I, was, I would always advocate people do is experiment. Have a think yourself. How do I get a particular colour that I want? How do I get an effect I want? Just spend a little while thinking about it and try your own methods. See if you get there. You'll learn loads doing that. But equally... Well, I'll stand I also, on the back of someone else's research. Exactly. I'll also find myself going away and... I watch loads of painting tutorials and videos and weirdly the most interesting ones for me are the um the cult of paint stuff that you get on their patreon which is them effectively talking about the thought processes behind it yeah but all of that is one obviously very high-end painters yeah. but it's generally someone going okay i'm not showing you how to paint a wood elf i'm showing you I'm painting this wood elf brown and I'm showing you the thought process behind why I did the, I mean, obviously, again, high yeah. end, why the lighting's the way it is or why this. And that thought process then applies to red, blue, green, whatever. It does. And actually, though, I think that you can take that thought process and almost use it like a recipe, for one of a better Yeah, yeah. Term. Follow, the, follow the... And, when she, and actually, it's, it's much more powerful if you can understand the thought process. It's almost like one of those yes-no flow charts. Kind of thing you follow <laughs> that down and get an answer of how you're going to do something rather than just being told blue two dots red yeah. three, three brush strokes to the left type thing exactly you understand why you're doing something and when you understand why you're doing it you can then make those little incremental improvements so for example you're thinking about a miniature here it's a field grey space marine you're thinking alright I've got a red I want to shade that red. What you might do, if you just follow the recipes, is go, that's my red. And I know if I just get a darker red and shade that down, then it'll look fine. And it will. But if you watch my videos, you might go, oh, I could use blue or green. Well, you might think I'll use a green to go in there because then actually, subconsciously, it will tie the mini together. Your brain will realise there's a green in that red and it just makes the whole thing work together better. And that's the little increments that you'll get. Yeah, or, you, or you mix if you follow the base the colour in to desaturate things and this, that, and the other. Yeah. yeah. But that's all stuff you pick up from one experience. So you said, and watching other people and talking to other people. Like, there's so many helpful uh, Facebook groups and stuff now, but and they're mm. not they're not a cesspit of hostility. There is lots of really nice ones, obviously PCP, but also ones like which is just a great hobby group for general making you feel good about your miniatures things really everyone likes nice comments on the miniatures don't they but it's one I live for you got things like <laughs> Evian Metal Painters Motivating Painters yep um, there's quite a few scale model weathering ones there as well but certainly those those two there's some very very high end painters in there who are willing to go oh yeah I'll have a look at this and they'll look at your miniatures for you and not going to break you down and say all the things you did. You know. There's ho- some of those things have hundreds of comments of some of people just give, being giving helpful encouragement, but still adding advice of oh if you wanted to, but not you must. It's if you wanted to. Yeah. Which is probably the best way of. Yeah, I think if you do know someone who is preferably a little bit better than you are at painting, but even if they're just interested in painting, ask them for feedback. Because it's valuable. Yeah, but that's interesting thing, isn't it? Knowing, just knowing about the techniques and that is kind of means you can give advice even if you can't do it. I think that's the, that, I don't think it's something where you have to be this is a high page. If you've watched a lot of videos, I'm not saying you should give out blind advice. But if you've watched a lot of videos, you could say to someone, oh yeah, you might, if you add a, a blue filter over that, that will bring those tones together nicely. Well, you know what, you, you know what it means. You know what the out, what it looked like. Just because you yeah. haven't done it doesn't mean you can't share that knowledge yeah absolutely I mean it's a a very wide ranging hobby I think really the thing I wanted to emphasise more than anything else more than buying really expensive brushes although I actually have a range of brushes some of these are terrible some of them are quite expensive and that's the best also way also have good stuff because why make love hard Plus well, yeah. only good only nice things is nice that's true although actually my nicest brushes I can't buy any more because they're Russian, or rather, the hair is Russian that they're made from. Oh well, yeah. I mean, 
big squirrels. Don't know why they have to be Russian squirrels. Apparently, only the the particular Russian. Siberia, isn't it? Yeah. So, uh, ethically speaking, I'm going to be deteriorating in my paint policy spin. Um, but Putin aside, I think, yeah, nice things is good. But really, it's just go away and embrace it as something that is always going to change. I thought you were only would just go away. <laughs> just go away. <laughs> well, that's what I'm going to tell you to do. At the end of the night, just go away. Just go Get away. out of my house. <laughs> yeah, no, really, it's it's more fun. Go away, think about painting. I think if you really want to get better, you have to think about it a lot rather than just executing the painting itself. Think about what you're doing. Think about why you're doing it oh. and what you could do to, yeah. to make those little improvements that will constantly evolve your painting. And really, I think that's the biggest takeaway. Don't just rely on looking at a, a list of recipes and just, I need to paint a blue, all right, I'll stick that blue in there. Yeah, then, then you'll probably the never same... be entirely happy with that either. You'll also then have the same blue on the loincloth of your Greeks as you've got on your Harlequin crests. Yeah. And you might want the same blue on that because it might be the blue you want, but there's a lot of blues. Yes. There's a whole, you know, there's a whole spectrum of colour. And if you learn the theory behind how you mix up a colour, you can have all those different colours. Yeah. So that's what I would recommend more than absolutely anything. I think there's Just go a it. lot of topics we can, and I'm sure we will, delve into about painting because it's such a broad, broad spectrum of painting for different reasons, painting different things, painting different subjects. I think that's yes. you know, yeah, painting different styles. I'm sure we can explore all those. Yeah, I think it'd be quite good to talk about that because I think there's different levels of painting I do. There's like, for example, I just want to paint a nice miniature and I'll push myself. There's project painting where you have to get a lot of things done. There's no point pushing yourself in every one. I tried that a few times and it no, but doesn't work. You might check, but all you, you've only got to change one thing that's new on that project and it still then becomes oh, learning a, yeah. a learning process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, even that with that, there's which if people are interested in, we could talk about is, is commission painting. And how do you get to the point where you're efficient with all the little cheat codes that will get you to a nice result without necessarily pushing yourself? Yeah, because that's something you have to accept, isn't it? Painting takes time, but mm. if you can make yourself more efficient, and I think that's something that comes with experience and maybe not talent's not the right word, but comes with experience and getting better is actually, you don't need to think about it, you get a lot more efficient actually yeah. oh yeah because commission painting definitely I don't want to give people the impression that you can just you know half ass it obviously you cannot at all you're doing a professional service for someone but you can it's definitely ask them what they want and then get hit that level you need to be efficient and hit that level and don't go above it because you're not going to yeah, and, make a living and also learning how to get an effect so you know, again go back to like a twenty mil British World War Two infantry. Well, I could do three. I had, I couldn't have whatever do three labels of highlights on the, um, on the Denison. But actually, from three foot away, actually, if I just did the last two highlights or the last highlight, they look better on the table. So it's learning. Oh, actually, some of that was, yes, it might look nicer close up. Some of it was wasted, and getting more efficient that way. Yeah. Of okay, that looks a bit too big a step change, but I think yeah, efficiency is something that comes with yes. lots of experience and and playing around with. Oh, that looks the same, but it took me half the time. Yeah, there's a lot of that. Um, so yeah, we can talk about that. There's actually a, a, as you say, a big untapped resource of different painting topics that we can chat about. Yeah, which I think we'll definitely do. But until then, hope you've enjoyed that one. And I hope you learned something, maybe, or that you at least enjoyed listening to us talking about it. And um, we will see you in the next one. Enjoy your painting. <laughs> That's where I can cut in some nice effect where it goes bang and everything's gone.